Listen to your gut. Butterflies in my stomach. Gut instincts. Gut feelings. Fire in the belly. Punch in the gut in the pit of your stomach. Yellow belly. Wait, is that a race thing? Sick to the stomach. Blood and guts. Gut reaction. No guts, no glory. The list of gut idioms goes on, but what do we really know about it? Hey buds, I had a request to make a video discussing the microbiome and gut health. Recently, I was referred to an MD over at Integrative Medicine. Uh, it was the first I've heard of such a thing. It's a practice that combines conventional and alternative medicine and attempts to take into account the patient's whole body and lifestyle. Surprisingly, the first major thing my doctor there wanted me to improve was my gut microbiota. A basic tenet of integrative nutrition is that digestive dysfunction is at the root of most maladies. Prior to this, I knew it could be important, but I had a passing interest in the subject. However, this simulation seems to want me to investigate the whole gut health thing, so that's why we're here today. The microbiome has been sort of a buzzword, but what precisely is it and why is it important? As I expected, it can get quite complicated. I mean, my brain blew quite a few fuses uh, several times. Okay, the microbiota refers to the microorganisms, microbes, or bacteria in a specific area. The microbiome refers to them and their genetic material. Uh, they're often used interchangeably in discussion. You might have also heard the term gut flora, which is the population of the microbiota in the gut. And gut health is generally considered to be the diversity of that population and the ratio of good microbiota to the bad. The gut refers to the gastrointestinal tract or digestive system, which groups together the mouth, esophagus, stomach, pancreas, liver, gallbladder, small intestine, colon, and rectum. Uh, the surface area of the gut is quite large, uh, approximately 32 squared meters or about half a Batman court. The gut is home to most of your immune cells and is the major source of inflammation in the body. Most of the intestinal microbes can be found inside a pocket within the large intestine called the cecum. The human gut has about a hundred million neurons, which is comparable to a dog's brain. Uh, it's connected to our central nervous system through a few pathways and bi-directionally to our brains via the vagus nerve called the uh, gut-brain axis. For those reasons, the gut is also often referred to as our second brain. So what's the interplay of this system with bacteria? There are roughly 40 trillion bacterial cells in your body and only 30 trillion human cells. So we are, in fact, more bacteria than human. It's evolutionary as we have lived with microbes for millions of years. From the moment we pass through our mother's vaginal walls, we are covered in microbes donating the seeds for our gut microbiota. Studies indicate that C-section newborns tend to have less strains of good gut bacteria found in healthy children and more strains of harmful bacteria that are commonplace in hospitals. Breast milk also continues and aids to seed our gut. Microbes produce metabolites that can activate enteroendocrine cells to release hormones in our body or pass through to our vagus nerve communicating directly to our brain. Through short chain fatty acids, microbes can also direct the type of immune cells and their function within the gut. If we accept that the second brain is a crucial part of our system and that bacteria can communicate and in essence control some of our basic functions and inflammatory responses, then it stands to reason that the gut flora is an important piece to our mental and physical well-being. It's reasonable to suggest we might be able to influence our overall health in a significant way and through that pathway. The gut-brain axis plays an important role in our body's stress responses and mental health. 90% of serotonin is made in the gut and is a key hormone that regulates our mood. In general, it has an important role on depression, cognition, pain, sleeping, eating, and digestion, which is exerted through the gut-brain axis. The microbiome can affect weight. Uh, in a very popular mouse study, the gut flora of an obese mouse was introduced into a thin mouse and also vice versa. They had the same diets before and after, the only difference being the population and diversity of their microbiome. This study found that the thin mouse started to gain weight and the obese mouse started to lose weight. Lactic acid bacteria specifically have been shown to slow fat cell growth. IBS is commonly attributed to gut dysbiosis or imbalance. Uh, lactic acid bacteria, or LAB for short, help regulate bowel movement. Uh, multiple studies show that it helps alleviate 
constipation and may ease sufferers of IBS. Uh, labs can be found in fermented vegetables like sauerkraut and kimchi. An interesting study pertinent to today's climate found that for each gram of uh, fermented vegetables consumed per day, the mortality rate for COVID-19 decreased by 35.4%. In another study, labs helped improve immune function as it stimulates and uh, regulates cytokine production, helping to prevent colds, uh, flu, and other infections. Along those lines, there's optimism that it can stall or perhaps prevent the progression of colon cancer, leukemia, breast cancer, skin cancer, via the creation of the powerful antioxidant IPA or uh, indole propionic acid. One of the suspicions at integrative medicine is that I may also have a leaky gut. It's also called increased intestinal permeability. This was news to me. Um, basically an unhealthy gut lining may have areas of uh, large cracks or holes allowing uh, partially digested food, toxins and bugs to uh, penetrate the actual tissues. This potentially triggers an inflammatory response, and if so, would contribute to many chronic metabolic diseases like chronic fatigue syndrome, uh, fibromyalgia, arthritis, allergies, asthma, acne, obesity, um, and mental illnesses, as well as autoimmune disorders like lupus, type one diabetes, and multiple sclerosis. The Hadza people of Tanzania have virtually none of the common Western diseases such as obesity, allergies, heart disease, and cancer, and they have a gut microbiome diversity about 40% higher than the average American. They consume upwards of 600 species of plants and animals, compared to fewer than 50 for us. The next question I had was how can we influence our microbiome? Ideally, with current knowledge, we would want a diverse microbiota composition with more good bacteria than not. Makes sense. The standard American diet, however, which is low in fiber and high in sugar, may initiate dysbiosis and create a bad balance in the gut. Aside from diet factors like heavy alcohol use, chronic stress, uh, use of proton pump inhibitors, and antibiotics, can wreak havoc and disrupt the ratio of good to bad bacteria in the gut. Diet modification, increasing fiber, uh, probiotics, um, fasting, uh, stress management, and yes, even fecal <laughs> transplantation could in turn have a positive effect by introducing or encouraging the growth of uh, beneficial bacteria. Maybe that's why puppies and baby koalas eat poop. I'm not telling you to eat shit, by the way. Let's focus on diet. From Korean kimchi to German sauerkrauts to Indian chutneys, yogurts, and cheeses, nearly every civilization has a fermented food in its history. There's evidence that people were fermenting beverages in Babylon around 3000 BCE. Uh, Eli Mechnikov studied and noted the Bulgarians had a lifespan of uh, 87 years, which was extraordinary for the 1900s, and linked it to their respective greater consumption of fermented milks. In my opinion, if you've not prioritized gut health when carnivore like me, then perhaps a good first step is to introduce or reseed with new good bacteria or probiotics. Uh, it would be nearly impossible for me to go through and research all the bacteria species and strains, um, but let's discuss a few. Uh, lactic acid bacteria is a probiotic commonly found in the aforementioned fermented foods. They can survive the highly acidic transit into the uh, cecum's anaerobic environment. It was also one of the first living organisms on the planet. Indole 3-lactic acid is also found in fermented foods and bacteria can convert this into the above mentioned antioxidant IPA. Fermentation is an anaerobic process, which is why it's important to really pack the jar if you're making kimchi at home. Uh, it was devised as an early food preservation technique. The uh, desirable bacteria thrive in this oxygen-free environment, digesting sugars, carbs, and starches, my keto friends, uh, and can survive the journey into the human gut. The undesirable bacteria that causes uh, spoilage, decay, and rot can't survive this anaerobic environment, and along with the acids produced by the good bacteria, preserve the food. To recap, aside from kimchi, yogurt, sauerkraut, tempeh, miso, pickles, real buttermilk, and some cheeses like Parmesan um, contain lactic acid bacteria. 
Not all fermented foods are created equal. Kombucha primarily works with AAB, but that needs oxygen to survive, so it will not make the journey into the gut. Uh, the byproducts created by this process is still beneficial, though, um, from the acid it creates, helping to uh, control blood sugar, lower blood pressure, and inflammation. Other fermented foods like beer and sourdough don't contain live cultures uh, to be of benefit uh, for this discussion. Uh, sorry, alcoholics. Um, I'd also personally stay away from fermented soybean foods for lectin and histamine reasons. Now, after introducing probiotic foods into our system, the next logical step to me is to grow the gut flora. Uh, it's understood that fiber is the main fuel or fertilizer for beneficial microbiome growth. Um, since I skew uh, keto, I looked up some high fiber, low carb foods, uh, included our flax, chia seeds, avocado, almonds, blackberries, uh, cauliflower, broccoli, and cabbage. The average American adult eats 10 to 15 grams of fiber per day. From what I understand, the goal should be two to three times that amount. Um, proponents of the paleo diet often promulgate our ancestors ate upwards of 100 grams of fiber a day. In theory, the good news for keto heads is you subtract fiber from carbs to get your net carbs. So I gather there shouldn't be an excuse to incorporate fiber into a diet. Um, a quarter cup of chia seeds, for example, yields about 11 grams of fiber. Polyphenols are also a fuel source for beneficial microbes. So once again, that would include uh, nuts, seeds, berries, coffee, tea, dark chocolate, apple cider vinegar with the mother, and lemon water with the pulp uh, would also be beneficial for the system as those contain acid and some fiber. The efficacy of probiotic pill supplements is up for debate and another rabbit hole I'm not gonna jump into today. I believe it's always better to get material from food anyways. Um, food is medicine, just in a more fun form. Uh, Mm. The last step is to accumulate microbe diversity. While hygiene was important for infectious disease control in the past, it really hasn't done us any favors in terms of our gut health. We can further help ourselves by getting out more. Touch a pile of dirt with your bare hands. Play with pets. Expose yourself to nature. Not expose yourself to nature, but you know, expose yourself to nature. Uh, get diversity by being diverse. Try out new foods when you travel. Uh, but when you get home, wait a while before you undergo a medical procedure. Finally, microbes might be transmittable, so hang around some healthy people if you can. Perhaps just as important is what to stay away from. Limit the use of antibiotics, corticosteroids, and proton pump inhibitors like heartburn meds. Avoid sugar and processed foods that feed pathogenic bacteria, which can lead to their overgrowth. Reduce stress and try to avoid toxins like pesticides, chlorine, um, and antibacterial products. So after all this, is it that important? Should the microbiome have priority in our lives? The truth is, it's kind of a hard thing to study and is still a relatively new field of research. Uh, I'm unsure of how stool samples accurately reflect the conditions of the gut flora. We still need to identify the ideal probiotic strains and population dosage. There's contradictory evidence too. Apparently, bacteria-free mice in a bacteria-free environment can live longer and are less likely to become obese on a Western diet. And even though there are 100 million neurons in the gut, that does pale in comparison to the 86 billion neurons in our actual brains. 60, 65 billion for me. I got hit a lot in the head growing up. Many people have reported success on the carnivore diet too for both mental and physical disorders and fiber is only found in plants. So what gives? Perhaps the body is capable of turning animal product into anti-inflammatory short chain fatty acids, taking care of the blood sugars and the colon. It's likely especially true if you eat nutrient packed organ meats and marrow. Perhaps the reduced microbiota diversity uh, on a carnivore diet simply means less microbes are needed since there aren't any plant materials, no carbs or starches to digest. Fasting and its effect on the microbiota is unclear and needs more research. One study did find that intermittent fasting did have a beneficial effect increasing anti-inflammatory species of bacteria in the gut while reducing pro-inflammatory ones. Uh, theoretical territory here, but in a 
2014 mouse study, they hypothesized that while starved, the beneficial bacteria had a longer lifespan than the harmful ones, thereby creating a healthier gut profile. I say all that to say this, there seems to be much more theory and hypothesis than solid conclusive data that I feel 100% confident about. But what does? However, I'm entirely intrigued by the data we do have and will thereby take my microbiota more seriously. There's this bacterial war raging on in my gut and as the rightful king of my microbiome, I will attempt to restore order. What about you? Anyways, I'm a glorified talking ape, so don't listen to me. I wouldn't. It took me 20 minutes to learn how to pronounce enteroendocrine. 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 That's it. Gotta run. Be well.